Today, I'll be giving you some tips to create realistic matte paintings. I got the idea for this scene after playing Rise of the Tomb Raider, which features some really nice looking set pieces and locations. Creating this effect required me to bounce back and forth between HitFilm and Photoshop, which would make it difficult to create a full length tutorial. So instead, I'll be going over some universal principles that you can apply to any of your landscape creations. I'm Javert Valbar for InscapeDigital.com. Let's get started. First, you should figure out a general idea of what you want to do. Because you're not creating from scratch, you're going to have to search the internet for pictures and videos you can use, unless you shoot them yourself. It helps to have an idea of the layout you're going for before you start compositing. For this scene, I knew I wanted mountains in the distance, and some sort of valley with a lake in the middle. And because I wanted to eventually publish the final product, I made sure to select images that were labeled for reuse on Google. When I found pictures I liked, I cut them out in Photoshop rather than HitFilm. I did this because I could use the Quick Select tool and other brushes that would make the job easier. I also used clipping masks, just in case I had to make a change later, then saved them as PNGs to retain transparency. The photos you get off the internet will sometimes be color graded or have a different white balance than the others. Try to neutralize it as best you can before adding the final grade. I found that the color balance effect was useful for changing the color of the highlights, midtones, and shadows. In HitFilm, I position the pictures at different Z indexes to get that feeling of depth. Although this whole composite is technically made up of only three pictures, it can feel like a landscape if you split them up and position them in 3D space. This valley picture, for example, I ended up cutting into three more pieces, a fore, mid, and background. The illusion of depth was there in the picture, I just had to utilize it. I created this whole scene before I filmed myself on the green screen, so that I'd know where the lens flare would be. Here I'm standing facing the sun, and so it was essential that I have matching lighting. I stood in front of a window in my house where the sun was coming in. This gave me that bright edge of light on my outline. If you don't get the lighting right in camera, it's going to be pretty hard to do in post, so try to match it as best you can. The camera movement was necessary to show the audience that there is depth in this composite, and that it's not just a 2D picture. But be careful when keyframing the 3D camera. It's easy to put in a movement that feels cool, but is actually impossible or unlikely in real life, and this can pull people out of the effect. Mine is a gradual sweep over 6 seconds. Nothing extreme, but enough to show the parallax. Because you're working with only pictures, Try to imagine what would have movement if it was a real scene. I added some slow atmospheric smoke, as well as a stock video of water moving over the lake. All I did to add this was create a feathered mask, drop the transparency, and slow it down using the speed effect. Here's another cool effect you can do with a scene like this. I'll go to the end of my timeline and hit the keyframe button for the camera's position and zoom. Then I'll go to the beginning and move the camera far back into Z space. Then I'll zoom in until it fills the frame, and look similar to how it did before. The final effect is a dolly zoom, and could maybe be used to show how far of a journey your character has in front of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Feel free to send me any matte paintings or hit film VFX that you make in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.